Hi, Richard Trimans here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Today we're doing another product walkthrough. This time it's Eigen. Uh, to tell us a bit more about it is Mark. Hi, Mark. Hi, Richard. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, a pleasure. Uh, I think a lot of people have wanted to see uh, a demo of Eigen for, for quite some time. So it's a, it's a great opportunity. Well, we can talk more um, after the demo about what Eigen does and so forth more broadly. But if you just like to get straight into the demo, um, I will disappear and let you take over. Brilliant. Thank you very much again. Well, thank you very much, everyone, and thank you very much for your time. So today I really want to bring to life a little bit Eigen's technology and how it can be applied to understanding what is in your documents and being able to extract out specific data points from those documents at scale and with ease. Now, Eigen, we take a no-code approach to the machine learning of our platform, and that really allows any business user to ask any question from any document. And in fact, given this uh, no-code approach and our low training requirements, only taking two to 50 documents, and to really show you what our clients are enjoying today, I want to show you how you can actually build models with Eigen without writing a single line of code, and you'll see me do it in around five minutes or so end to end. So let's start it. The first step with any given Eigen workflow is to create a project. And you can imagine a project is pertaining to a particular document type or a particular scenario. In this case, we're looking to extract out as the subject of today's demo, a set of data points out of our vendor contracts, focusing on some supply and distribution agreements. The first step then is to set up our project and we can call it vendor contracts. And we'll dive in. And this is really the view that most of our users face when they actually get started with Icon. You can imagine this is really our blank canvas to begin training the machine. On the left-hand side, we have our data summary with no documents uploaded, no labeled documents or documents that a human has tagged to train the machine and no questions asked of those. So naturally, the first step is to upload some of our training documents and begin that process. I'm now gonna upload and then ingest two training documents and you'll see me build these models live from scratch with only two documents. I'll jump in here. If you do have your scanned or you know, fax documents, we do have an inbuilt OCI and able to take those scanned images then turn them into something that the machine can read. And then once that's happened, we have this view here. This is really what I call our labeling view. And this is where we start telling the machine the specific data points that we want the machine to answer for us across our entire vendor contract set. Some key data points will always be some of the date information of the document. So here, the effective date. And let's say if we want to capture this as a variable, all you do as a user is click, drag and tag, the specific element of the document that pertains to that answer. And we can call this the effective date. Let's also pull out some of the counterparty information, namely Patient Safety Technologies, Inc. And we can describe that perhaps as the supplier name. Now we can take things from the preamble, but of course we can take things from the body of the document itself. We can use this control F bar as we see here to be able to add a little bit more data and uh, dive into the document with ease. For instance, looking for the termination clause, scrolling down and finding it. And similarly to the first two data points, that's an example of what we call our point extraction technology. And that really is uh, the ability to not only pull out entire sections, but dive into that section and then pull out sub-sentence level pieces of information. And the way that we do that and are able to do it is through that contextual understanding. When I tag the effective date or the supplier name, as you saw me do here earlier, the machine isn't simply looking for a name or a date on the first page of the document, and then we'll pull out any names or dates that are found on the first page. Rather, Eigen is capturing the surrounding context and there's understanding that context. So regardless of the effective date is called the starting date or the starting term, or if the supplier name is called the vendor name, et cetera, uh, regardless of how the specific vocabulary is being used, how the document has been drafted, Eigen, because we have that natural language understanding built into the platform, it can understand what that context is. And so long as that context is a match, the machine will be able to identify that and then pull that information out for us. We can also then apply this, I go back to our termination clause, to sections as well. So we can also pull out the entire section of the document. The machine will suggest it's not as a point extraction, but a section extraction question. We can then call this termination clause. But again, leveraging our point extraction capability, we can also pull out data points from within specific sections as well. In this case, pulling out the termination period. 
let's perhaps grab one more field for today. Let's pull up the sort of force majeure language. And again, simply click, dragging and tagging and calling that the FM clause. Now this no code approach to building up your training set really allows any business user to get running with Eigen and can actually enjoy the power of machine learning in their own hands without having to learn Python, without having to work with their IT or, or data science teams. Really, they're the ones who understand these documents the best. They're the ones that read these documents day in, day out, and they're the ones that can control exactly how the machine is going to be used to augment their current workflows. And now go to the second document and repeat that exact same process. And it's that repeat of being able to build out that training set, which will add and then supplement the machine's understanding of the correct context to look for when putting out these data points. So let me just quickly label this up here, looking for the termination clause once more. Termination of convenience. Termination period, here being 60 days. Supplier name again, going to the top of the document. Biopure Corporation. And then finally, effective date, May 13th, 2008. And now we can quickly review our labels, making sure that we haven't made any mistakes, and then finally create our models and then build. And that is the exact same process that any user will take to build models with Eigen. And again, we only need two to 50 documents to build the models in a robust way. And that allows us to have a time to value, a time from documents to data in a matter of minutes or hours. Whilst they train, I'll now upload a set of new documents that the machine has never seen before. And essentially, as I click train, what the machine is doing is memorizing those linguistic similarities between those two documents that uh, we showed it today in the training set. So when it sees those same similarities in documents that it's never seen before, such as these that I've just uploaded, the machine now knows exactly what your own documents look like. It's not biased by some publicly available sets that have been trained on. They've only been trained on your own documents. They are biased towards your own documents. And so therefore they will always extract best on your own documents as well. And then additionally, any models that you use Eigen to build on your own documents will become your IP and your IP alone. There is no hive mind that Eigen that's getting smarter every single time one of our clients trains a model. No, all the models that you build are your IP, your IP alone, and will be used to benefit your organization and your organization alone. You've seen me build out our extraction capability on the left-hand side, but Eigen, if I look to create a new question here, we have a point extraction, as you've seen, a section extraction, as you've seen, but also a logic interpretation as well. Logic is no extraction, but actually allows you to pull out uh, you know, a little bit more of an interpretation layer out of, the, out of the document. For example, answering yes and no questions, such as, is epidemic covered in the force measure clause? Now, rather than adding labels to train up a machine learning set, we have a no-code approach for allowing any business user to add in some if and then statements to be able to do some interpretation for them. For instance, manually, you would say, well, does the force majeure clause uh, cover epidemics? You would simply look into the force majeure clause and look for the word epidemic. You can operate that process with Eigen's if then statement UI, as you can see here, by saying, well, if the force majeure clause contains a reference to epidemic, then simply the answer is yes. Otherwise, the answer is no. A very simple example for today's demo, but you can imagine how this might be used in reality where actually you, know, you might be looking uh, to bucket certain documents according to certain criteria, that very much kind of pre-processing workflow for any given larger regulatory reporting or, or repapering exercise, et cetera, can very much be automated through this platform here. We will save that. And now that our models have been built, we'll go to our library, create our two uh, training documents, also select our five or so extraction documents. And now we can create an analysis or an extraction, call it analysis one and run. And where we previously had only minutes ago, a set of uh, PDFs that are unstructured, we really had no idea what was in them. Uh, through this very quick and easy to use approach of labeling up a, a small set of documents, creating a model and then running an extraction. As we can see here, the user will quickly be presented with now a structured data tape out of previously unstructured PDFs. And really that is 
a process that takes minutes. Now, there are a couple other elements, as we can see here, namely a uh, slight color coding. So these dark blue data points here are those labeled documents where the manually has uh, been added into the platform, as well as these yellow or low confidence answers. And this is a key element of, of Icon's platform. Each extraction does present a high and low confidence flag, high confidence being these untagged cells here, and these yellow low confidence answers being tagged here. Quite a few low confidence answers, because again, you've only given it two examples. In reality, you might need to give it anywhere between two to 50 to really have a robust model and have a very low limited uh, number of low confidence answers. But as a user, you can imagine you can very easily gather these low confidence answers, top right hand corner, mark for review, select them all, and then send to review very easily. And this is very interesting for two perspectives. One, it absolutely does augment that uh, human in the loop process. And secondly, because you have those high and low confidence flags, if you do have an, a day in day out workflow where you just need Eigen kind of sitting in your organization and extracting information day in, day out. You also have an ability to leverage those high confidence answers as straight through process. And that really does get quite exciting from an ROI perspective and allows you to think about new ways of reconstructing your workflows in order to leverage technology such as this. But for the low confidence answers, we now in the bottom right hand corner can see we have a number of assignments. You can now dive into on a question by question basis as you see me doing for effective date. The machine will bring you right to the point of the document where it thinks that low confidence answer is. And as we can see here, low confidence doesn't necessarily mean incorrect. So we can confirm this to be true. If there are two answers, we can delete the erroneous one and then confirm the correct one. And as we can see here, this is actually not taken from the correct area of the document. So we delete this as an incorrect answer, go up to the top, look for the effective date, which perhaps uh, isn't found in this particular document. So we can always tag this as no answer found. And also use this flag or escalation feature here to say no effective date, flag for repapering. We can confirm. All of these changes will be captured in a structured audit log. So you know exactly which users have been able to change which answers and when they did it and as well as capturing these kind of comment data that also is available via download in the UI, via CSV, as well as leveraging our APIs for automatic outputs as well. Going back to our project, you can imagine what the workflow would now be. You upload your documents, you train your models, you then upload the rest of your documents, you run an extraction, you gather your low confidence answers, and then finally you wanna get your hands on that data, having remediated those low confidence answers and having that data set ready to be used for decision making. That final step of getting your hands on that data is really an export. Top right hand corner, if based in the UI, into CSV or Excel format. But again, we also have a full suite of APIs that allows you to automate every step of the journey that you've seen in the demo today to really allow for end to end processing in a truly automated fashion. And that really is Documents to Data with Eigen. Thank you very much. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Uh, really interesting. Uh, let, can we just do a bit of a test? Um, with the question system, so is the epidemic covered by force majeure? Uh, if we look at S and D five, where it says yes, yes, can we just have a look at what it actually says in the text? Yeah, so here again, low confidence answer probably needs a little bit more training data to narrow in into the force majeure language. Yeah. If we look for here, acts of God. Fire, flood, civil disturbance, strikes, insurrections, earthquakes, rebellion, ah, and epidemics. So, epidemics yeah. so that, and what did we say? Yes. Uh, exactly. So it's correct. Right. Right. All right. Let's try another. Can we go back? Go back to the main. Yeah. Let's pick a no. Let's look at SD4. No. Let's have a look. All righty. So let's have a look at the list. Force majeure, right, acts of God, explosion, flood, regulations, laws, governance, code, terrorism, civil commotion, civil commotion, interesting, strike, lockout, labor disturbance, failure, utilities, et cetera, et cetera. Yep, doesn't mention pandemic at all. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, that, for me, I mean, the, the general extraction, you know, we see quite a lot of, obviously, as you, as you would expect. Um, uh, the, the, the different approaches to Q&A are interesting. Uh, could you, for example, just literally do just a 
a, a completely straight question, you know, like, uh, you know, is the change of control clause normal? Yes, absolutely. You first need to define what normal is. Um, so really, there's two ways that you could do that. One is very much you're looking for those uh, specific language elements that would describe that as normal, and whether that be market or normal to that specific organization. And that's one way of doing it. And the second is actually being able to capture what that actual language looks like, and then maybe doing a bespoke question through the use of our uh, developer offering as well, to be able to then co compare that and give you almost a percentage outcome of how likelihood or, or how similar rather that particular clause is to quote unquote standard or market language. So yeah, clause comparison is absolutely something that uh, can be adopted in the platform, so long as the extractions are there to be able to provide that comparison. Gotcha, gotcha. And ju just going back to the training set, I mean, you know, I'm, I, it, it's impressive that you can get anywhere with just two samples. Um, is that because even though the documents, the other documents Eigen hasn't seen before, but even so, they're not that different? Uh, so, yes, I mean, the number of training data points you need to build up a model really depends on very much as you described how homogeneous that document set is. So. Uh, but again, given the level of excellence that we baked into the platform, particularly around the natural language understanding, we typically see say 90 percent of all our models today are built between you know two to 50 models, uh, two to 50 data points. Now, as you want to go towards a straight through processing workflow where you're looking at 99.5 percent accuracy, then absolutely you do need to supplement that training set beyond that 50 mark. Uh, but yes, as you've seen here, two, drain, two training data points, again, does provide some level of extraction because these documents are somewhat similar. Uh, but perhaps to give you an example of, of an extreme case, uh, bilateral loans, for example, bilateral loans are notorious to have an automated approach to data extraction from the credit agreement itself uh, because they don't really follow an LMA or LSTA style unlike their syndicated cousins. Bilateral loans, you have 100 lawyers writing the same bilateral loan, you have 100 very different credit agreements. So there's a lot of variation in how people draft, how people actually write down these uh, particular clauses, how they structure them, and the vocabulary that they use as well. But again, because Eigen really only looks at the understanding of the language rather than a simple rules-based approaches, that does allow you to navigate this variation found in more complex documents and really allows you to service a lot more use cases with the Eigen platform. Gotcha. And just last uh, last technical question before we get on to uh, how people can get hold of this. Um, in terms of uh, sort of false positives, how do you handle that? I mean, I can see that you've got things where it says like no answer. So, you know, rather than just making something up, it just went, we don't have it. Uh, but you've got two different things. You've got answer not found uh, in one column. And then in another column, it literally says no answer, which presumably means there is literally no effective date here. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. So no answer found here is really where the machine hasn't been able to find an answer. Now, this can be a true negative or indeed a false negative as well. And I can talk a lot about how you can actually validate data points coming out of Eigen, almost down, uh, baking in four eye checks with heuristic validations, for example. Uh, one here would be, is the effective data an answer not found? Well, typically you would always expect a, a document to have an effective date. So you can always automatically flag this as low confidence to be able to pick that up. No answer here, though, is really when I was reviewing those data points and that one document actually didn't have an answer in. So in that case, this is no answer as it's been, as you can see here, reviewed by a human. Those are the differences between the two cells you see there. Gotcha, gotcha. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Well, that's kind of all we have time for, really. But just, just before we go, uh, if in terms of getting hold of this, I guess it's just a straightforward license. And then in terms of actually using it and paying for it, do you charge... Uh, by the document, by the quantity of data? Is it just an annual license? Uh, how does that work? Uh, correct. So typically there is, uh, it's based on consumption and the assumption metric is really extraction. So you can imagine each cell here being an extraction. Now, although we, depending on the, the client and the use case, there is some flexibility to that. So, and in terms of how you can get your hands on the platform, we would absolutely welcome everyone to visit our website. There's a small uh, web form page that you can use to get in touch with us. And we would love to understand what your document problem is exactly what you want to get out of it and how i can help so very much looking forward to hearing from you fantastic thanks mark uh, much appreciated thank you thank you